What's going on guys? I'm your girl Joss Bedard. Thanks for coming back to Top 10 Beyond the Screen. If you're new here, come find us outside of YouTube. Our social media links are down below. And hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss another video and we can hang out every day. For today's video, we are back at it again, continuing one of our lists with a part four. What are you guys doing to me? Let's continue the fun and take a look at 10 more Hollywood stars who chose to live a regular life. Me, you just didn't know it, I'm a Hollywood star. But see, I do such a good job at living a regular life, you just don't even know. Gotcha. Starting off at number 10 is Carly Schroeder, the Lizzie McGuire actress traded in her childhood fame to enlist in the army and be an advocate for human trafficking victims. She first announced her big change in February 2019 where she wrote, For 22 years I've played dress up for a living. I tormented Lizzie McGuire's little brother on the Disney Channel, was a dolphin trainer, the first female soccer player on an all boys team, and Harrison Ford once rescued me during an intense home invasion. I've been considering it for a while and it was a big choice. She opened up about her decision with TMZ and said that her dad was in the army as a Green Barrett medic and her younger brother is in the Marines also. When she wasn't acting, she was spending time working with veterans and advocating for human trafficking victims which is what ultimately led to her decision. Carly documented some of her training on her Instagram and in all fairness, she didn't really ditch fame for a regular life, she left Hollywood to fight for her country. So round of applause for her because not many people will do that, like me. I'm too fragile for the army. I get killed immediately. <laughs> First day in training. Coming in next, number nine is Mike Vitter. If you grew up in the 90s, then you probably watched and adored him for his role as Benny Rodriguez, aka The Jet, in the movie Sandlot. He decided to leave his acting career behind just five years after his success from Sandlot in 1993. And we only found out what he has been up to because a video went viral of him casually saving a kitten from smoke inhalation after a car explosion. Yes, that is right, he left Hollywood to become a man in uniform, which is never a bad thing. Am I right, ladies? The LA Firemen's Relief Association wrote a birthday post on their Tumblr page that started to gain traction. It showed a picture of him all suited up in his gear and said, Happy birthday to Los Angeles firefighter Mike Vitter, aka Benny the Jet Rodriguez, from the super awesome film The Sandlot. They just had to give him that clout, you know? Unfortunately, people haven't been able to interview him, so it seems like his Hollywood life is really in the past for good. Next up at number 8 is Steven Seagal. For many years the actor was kicking butt and taking names on the big screen, but then he decided he wanted to do that in real life instead. Back in 2013, he decided to leave his acting career and became a reserve police officer in New Mexico in 2013. Which makes sense, because throughout his years he's gained a ton of personal knowledge of training and self-defense, so rather than dedicating it to movies, he gave it to the Donna Anna County Police Department. Kelly Jackson, the spokeswoman of the department, spoke with the Los Angeles Times and said, we could get this type of training elsewhere, but there's just something special about Mr. Seagal. He later went on to be the deputy sheriff for the Jefferson Parish in Louisiana and says that's where he brings in some of the most dangerous criminals. He said, The thing I like best is forming a team where we can go after high risk warrants for people who are armed and dangerous, murderers, bank robbers, rapists, kidnappers. Those are the guys I like to get. Now, he's still popping up in movies here and there, even though he's technically retired, but things affected his acting career in 2018 when allegations were made that he raped and sexually assaulted two women, which he says is completely false and made up. Sliding to the number 7 spot is Barrett Oliver. He was once a very popular child actor in the 1980s, starring in films like The Never Ending Story and Cocoon. But he chose to walk away from the acting scene when he was just 16 years old because he wanted to pursue other opportunities. He ended up finding an interest in photography and went to college to study it. He studied under an artist named Steven Berkman and two master photographers named Cole Weston and George Tyler. Ice, who introduced him to this unique 19th century technique of wet plate photography. From there, he created his own unique style and has spent the last decade giving lectures and hosting his own workshops around the country to promote his craft. Not only is he a photography teacher, but he is also an author. He published a book called A History of the Woodbury Type. Honestly, he seems pretty content with his decision to depart from Hollywood all those years ago. He's chilling. He's cruising. Seems happy. Here now at number 6 we have Shirley Temple. She started her acting career at the young age of 3 and became Hollywood's biggest box office child star in the 30s. If you don't know who I'm talking about, she's the girl who sang that famous song Animal Crackers in My Soup. I literally sang it every time I had a bowl of soup as a kid. 
probably still do. By the time she was 12, she starred in 43 movies and a bunch of commercials. But when she turned 22 years old, she decided she wanted to give all of that up and live a normal life outside of the spotlight. She ended up changing her career path entirely and actually ran for Congress in 1967. Unfortunately, she lost, but then two years later, she was appointed to represent the US at the United Nations. And then later down the road, she became the US ambassador to Ghana from 1974 to 1976. Who would have thought the animal cracker girl would end up in politics? Sadly, she did pass away in 2014 at the age of 85, but her memory lives on forever in both Hollywood and in politics. It's kind of like she lived two different lifetimes, like in one, which is pretty sweet. Halfway through the list number five is Charlie Corsmo. He first became known for being in Steven Spielberg's Peter Pan retelling Hook. He was one of the two children who gets kidnapped by the captain. But then he was later known for being a high school nerd who can't seem to fit in at house parties in the movie Can't Hardly Wait. But now he's not really known for any of his roles because he decided to put his acting career to rest and pursue a completely different field. He says that when he made the decision to give acting a break and live a more normal life, he realized that he actually really enjoyed going to school. I don't get people who like school. So he spent years in school and is now an assistant professor of law. He told the Daily Mail, he told the Daily that he probably would have been kicked out of Hollywood anyway, so leaving it was a smart move. He said, I think I managed the trick of leaving voluntarily just about the time I would have been thrown out anyways. Apparently, he says that he'd be losing out on roles regardless as he grew out of his child actor stage. But to me, it's like, of course you would with that attitude, Charlie. Have some positivity. Here we are number four with Noah Hathaway. Everyone loves a good comeback story and he might have one of his own after leaving Hollywood to live a normal life and then wiggling his way back in many years later. He was 12 years old when he had his breakout role in The Never Ending Story. After the success of the movie, he was able to book other roles but decided in 1994 that he would leave it all behind. He spoke about it and said, I worked the first 20 something years of my life as an actor. I just wanted to drop off the radar and be a regular human being. But after his long break, he decided in 2012 to make a return and start in the movie Sushi Girl. From there, he's booked a couple of roles, his biggest one being in Tom Holland's Twisted Tales back in 2014. But his acting career and fame isn't what it used to be, so he still lives a fairly regular lifestyle. But his comeback story is still a good one. He kind of got the best of both worlds. Took a break, came back, once was an actor. I don't know, he's like Hannah Montana right there. In the third spot on our countdown list is Tony Danza. He was the Italian heartthrob that captured the attention of his female audience when he first starred in Who's the Boss? But his success started to fade out as he starred in sitcoms that failed to take off, and as time went on, fans started to see less and less of him. It was in 2009 that he left the fame behind and became a 10th grade English teacher in Philadelphia. He did study education when he was younger and said that part of him always wanted to teach, but he wanted to pursue other careers first. He first went with boxing and then later on did the whole Hollywood scene. But he dived into teaching and took it seriously, which is what helped him in his 2010 A&E reality series called Teach Tony Danza. He also wrote a book in 2012 called I'd Like to Apologize to Every Teacher I Ever Had, My Years as a Rookie Teacher at Northeast High. His teaching career only lasted a year at that school, but says that he never felt more at home. During an interview, he said, I just liked the community. I just felt really at home and not only did they accept me, but I just felt like I was home. But he too has a bit of a comeback story. Since 2012, he has booked four roles, but people were thrilled to see him taking on the role in 2018 for the TV series The Good Cop. The actor slash teacher is now 68 years old and he himself doesn't know where his life is headed. I mean, he could retire at this point, I'm sure, but he's still doing community work in Philadelphia and is working on projects and events with the school that he used to teach at. Coming into our number two slot is Heather Donahue. She found herself on the fast track to fame after taking the lead role in the successful movie The Blair Witch Project. But the attention didn't sit well with her and she really didn't want any part of it. She dabbled in it and booked roles here and there until 2008 when she decided that it was not the life for her. So what did she do after leaving her acting career? She went on to grow marijuana for a living. And no, this is not a joke. It all began in 2007 when she received her own prescription of medical marijuana and she realized the benefits that it could have on other people. So she started her own farm and started to grow it on
on her own. She even wrote a book called Grow Girl, How My Life After the Blair Witch Project Went to Pot. As for her experience in Hollywood, she doesn't have any positive things to say. In fact, she burned all of her stuff. She told the Daily Mail, I took all my stuff into the desert related to my acting career and burned it all. The only thing I kept was the blue ski cap from the movie poster. I figured if things got really bad, I could sell it on eBay. Well, at least she has a backup plan, right? We made it number one, you guys, and we have the one and only Gene Hackman. This man deserved to live a regular life after dedicating pretty much his entire life to his acting career. He was an actor for almost five decades, and he managed to win a handful of awards and nominations for his performances. He has been given the title of one of the greatest actors of all time, and people were sad when he announced in 2004 that he was leaving his career behind. People were shocked, but at the same time, it's like, can we really be that surprised? Like the rest of us, he has to retire at some point. He decided he wanted to focus on writing instead, and since leaving the Hollywood limelight, he has written a number of historical fiction novels that are set in times and places ranging from the Great Depression all the way to the Wild West. So you can still keep up with him, it's just through books nowadays, not on a screen. Well there you have it guys, that is our list for today, let's chat about it in the comments. I want to know what you guys are thinking, but for now I'm going to end today's video with some common shoutouts from part 3. Mama Pink says, I feel like a proud mama watching her daughter have so much fun at her job. You make me laugh. Thank you for the giggle snort. Thanks so much. That was honestly so nice to read. I'm not going to lie. I would pay to have heard that giggle snort that you speak of. Dennis O'Brien says, Meg Ryan went too far with the cosmetic surgery. Agreed. Honestly, she was so pretty, she didn't even need it. Dee Marie Dubois says, Lindsay Lohan's beach club business shut down as soon as the show was not renewed for a second year. Honestly, I just read an article this morning that said the spot on the beach is now deserted where her nightclub once was. So yeah, guess she's not getting a second season of that show. Allison Atai says, the Shermanator is in a new insurance commercial. Yay, that means he is booking some roles. So maybe he will have like a huge comeback after all. Here's open. All right, guys, we are at the end here. Make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell if you haven't already, and show us some love by hitting the thumbs up button.